The Trump administration continues to spread all sorts of disinformation when it comes to mail in voting. Now, of course, this is happening while the post office is being assaulted by the postmaster general, who is a Trump ally and donor. Now, it's all really fascinating when you consider the fact that Donald Trump, who claims he doesn't trust in mail in voting, has requested a mail in ballot. Not only has he requested a mail-in ballot, so has Melania Trump. So the records from the Palm Beach County Supervisor of Elections website shows the ballots were mailed Wednesday to Trump's Mar-a-Lago Club, which he made his permanent residence last year. So he will be voting by mail. And so I just want to remind you all of what Trump had to say about denying funding to the post office, the very real reason, very transparent reason for why he wanted to deny much needed funding to the post office. That was a recent you know, statement that he made. Let's take a quick look at that. They want three and a half trillion billion dollars for the mail-in votes, okay, universal mail-in ballots. Three and a half trillion. They want $25 billion, billion for the post office. Now they need that money in order to have the post office work so it can take all of these millions and millions of ballots. Now in the meantime, they aren't getting there. By the way, those are just two items. But if they don't get those two items, that means you can't have universal mail-in voting. So I want to be clear about a couple of things. First of all, she says, oh no, there's a big difference between absentee voting and mail-in voting. There is no difference, it's the same process. So. Uh, total lie, he's doing what he's telling you not to do as always. And as always says the quiet part out loud. He just told you he's doing it for political reasons. He does want to give the post office money uh, so they could do more mail in voting. But wait a minute, wait a minute. If you're a MAGA guy and you say, hey, listen guys, uh, I'm really worried about voter fraud. Well, then wouldn't you give the post office more money? not less money so they can make sure that they could counteract this rampant voter fraud that you're worried about. I mean, how would it help if you're worried about voter fraud to give the post office less money so they have less in their arsenal to combat what you think is this unbelievable surge of voter fraud. So none of that makes any sense. What does make sense is what we're gonna explain a little bit later in this video for you guys, which is, who wins if you just if you count all the votes and who wins if you just count in person votes and that is everything but more on the details of this story so Trump was asked, well, why is it that you feel comfortable voting by mail in the state of Florida? And so I think his statement makes it pretty clear that he not only knows that mail in voting and absentee voting is the same thing, but that he is pursuing this in an incredibly political and politicized way. He says, whether you call it vote by mail or absentee voting, in Florida, the election system is safe and secure tried and true. Florida's voting system has been cleaned up. We defeated Democrats attempts to ch at change. So in Florida, I encourage all to request a ballot and vote by mail. So while he is you know, in, in a lot of blue states questioning the validity of mail-in voting or the safety of mail-in voting, thus it discouraging people to vote by mail. In Florida, where he has you know a pretty significant portion of his supporters, he's saying, no, 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 go out there and vote. Go out there and vote, it's totally safe, it's totally fine. Whether you call it absentee voting or mail-in voting doesn't really matter. So some more evidence that this is purely political and that he is, he's trying to steal the election. Um, earlier this month, he told reporters, so Florida's got a great Republican governor. And it had a great Republican governor before that. And over a long period of time, they've been able to get the absentee ballots done extremely professionally. What does that even mean? Florida's different from other states. Again, you know, just spreading this idea that Florida, their absentee or mail-in voting is different. There is very, there's no evidence that there's widespread voter fraud through mail-in ballots. We've gone over that. We've shown you the evidence over and over again. Trump then criticized, though, vote by mail efforts in Nevada and New York, states led by Democratic governors. And by the way, as we know, the post office is under complete assault by the postmaster general. Louis DeJoy is his name. He is a huge Trump loyalist and donor.
And what we're finding now is that a number of mail sorting machines, which would desperately be needed to sort through ballots for the general election, are now being taken out of the post office entirely. So 671 machines used to organize letters and other pieces of mail are slated for reduction in dozens of cities this year. The agency started removing machines in June, according to postal workers. The new procedures were described in a July memo and include staff hours being cut. So sorting machines are being decommissioned. You have postal workers hours getting cut. And then also let's keep in mind that these sorting machines will basically do the job of 30 postal workers, right? With the sorting machines, you only need three postal workers. And so these are incredibly important machines when you're gonna expect this influx of mail because of this election, because of mail-in ballots. Um, so the post office, in addition to all of this, is also removing drop boxes in various parts of the country. We've seen some evidence of this in uh, Portland and Eugene, Oregon. So let's take a quick look at this tweet, which gives you, uh, you know, some evidence of it. There's a truck with all of these post office drop box loaded onto the back. Trump is trying to steal the election. He's gutting the USPS, United States Postal Service, to make it difficult for people to vote by mail. Here in Oregon, that's our only option. This demands attention. Now, a Postal Service spokesperson said declining mail volume means the Postal Service is removing duplicate boxes from areas that have multiple collection boxes. That is a complete lie. The USPS confirmed that four mailboxes were removed in Portland this week. Gee, I wonder why they focused on Portland. Gee, hmm. and one resident, let me just give you one more quote. One resident from Eugene, Oregon spoke to the Oregonian and said the following. Outbound slots in neighborhood mailboxes are being locked shut. We are not just losing access to roadside mail drop boxes, but our convenient neighborhood drop slots. This applies to neighborhoods without individual mailboxes. So we are unable to send outbound mail from our area without finding a roadside mailbox or risking a trip to the post office. Okay, so uh, like I told you, we're gonna explain why they're doing all this in a second. First, some quick uh, comments. If you said, what is the one state in this country that has a history, history of uh, having deep problems with their voting system? It would be Florida. It's the most obvious thing in the world. We had a giant election and a Supreme Court decision over how terrible the voting system was in Florida, Florida. So. Trump, as always, turning the truth on its head and pretending, oh, that's the one state we got locked up. Yeah, that's the one state that's so corrupt that you're not worried about how they're gonna count the votes. But where they're not corrupt, you're deeply worried. So number two, the sorting machines, think about this, guys. And, and uh, the unions have said this and the postal workers have said this. They're like, look, if you think the sorting machines are not needed because we have less volume, don't turn them on. Unplug them. They're taking them away and even dismantling them. Why would you do that? What if volume rises again? Put aside the election. What if the coronavirus is over and volume of mail rises again? Why did you disassemble the voting machines? I'm sorry, the sorting machines at the post office? Because they want it to take a lot longer to count the mail in votes. Again, just a second, I'm going to show you why. But Louis DeJoy, why is he even here? He, the guy gave over $2 million to Trump and the Republican Party. He has 30 to $75 million in USPS competitors and contractors. So even if you put aside the voting, this guy's dismantling the post office so he can get richer. Look, are there any reporters left in the country? I understand that you're reporting these things, but that's obvious bribery. Call it what it is. Why does Jake. Louis Joy have that job as the head of the post office? Because of bribery. Every actual human being knows that, but the reporters will not call it that. Oh, he just happened to be there. I don't know. What a, what a lucky break. So my issue with this, it actually goes beyond reporters because there has been some pretty good reporting on this issue. But reporters aren't 
supposed to, you know, do something as lawmakers are, right? So, I mean, you have both the House and the Senate on vacay right now, while Donald Trump is unilaterally destroying our democratic process. Why are you guys on vacation? What are you doing? What are they doing on recess? We're going to talk about that in more detail later, but Reporters are meant to report on these stories. And you know, at least we know the details of the corruption that's taking place right now. And at least there are multiple sources that are reporting on it. Whereas both Democrats and Republicans in Congress are like, see you later. No stimulus bill for you, no economic relief for Americans. The post office is under assault. I don't know, we can't come to any agreement. So we're just gonna go vacation now. We're gonna go on recess, it's pathetic. By the way, they could look to impeach uh, uh, DeJoy if they want. Uh, and you say, oh, well, that sounds extreme. No, putting in a guy who bribed you for $2 million so he could dismantle the post office right before the election, that's extreme. And you should fight back. Is they're literally taking the mailboxes off the streets saying there's no way we're gonna let you mail in these votes. So for uh, so Brett, I, let, I'm, what I'm gonna show you guys first is the graphics of if everyone votes, and the polling is what it currently is. This is why every Democrat in the country wants every vote counted and not a single Republican does. Every Republican is saying, no, 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 don't, don't, don't count all the votes. Whatever you do, don't count all the votes, don't count the mail-in ones. Because if you count all the votes, this is how the Electoral College would wind up if things held steady. Let's show it. So you see, oh, look at that, Biden wins easily. 352 to 186, it's a blowout, it's a landslide. But if only in-person voting counts, today, according to the polling, Trump wins 306 to 232. Because a much higher percentage of Biden's voters are mailing in their ballots. So what Trump and the Republican Party is doing is saying, hey, if we can delay the mail-in votes being counted long enough, we can declare victory on the in-person voting and just wrap up the election. And we have a blueprint for this, it's 2000. When Fox News called the election for George Bush and said, "Oh, he's got a 537 vote lead, it's over, it's over. Now reality is they counted later and it turns out Gore had won the state of Florida. But it, but it was too late because they'd already stolen the election. So they're gonna try to do it again. And with this disparity in in-person voting results versus all voting results, and understand that that first number we showed you, where Biden was in a landslide, is not just the mail-in portion. That's all of it, including in-person and mail-in. Okay, all of it, and Biden landslides it. But if you only take the in-person, then Trump wins, and that's why they want to make sure you cannot cast your mail-in ballot. And if you do, they're not gonna count it until much later and declare Trump the winner. So everything is riding on this and, and the Republicans know it too. Everybody knows who's gonna win if you count all the votes. The rest is just trying to figure out if the Republicans can cheat enough to change that result. Yeah, I mean, they can't win on ideas. They can't win on reflecting on the Trump administration so far and, and you know, highlighting what he's done well. He hasn't done anything well. He's failed in every single way, shape, and form you can imagine. And at the same time, all of these Republican lawmakers have licked his boots throughout the entire process. So they know that they need to rely on literally rigging this election in their favor. And that's what's happening right now. And the most depressing part is that we're supposed to have a system of checks and balances. The Supreme Court, if this kind of situation makes its way to the Supreme Court, I mean, it's now packed with conservative judges. So we don't know how that's gonna end up. Congress is obviously feckless and useless. They're on vacation right now. I mean, it's just, and I think it's part of the reason why Republican lawmakers have just kind of given up on any type of stimulus bill to offer economic relief for Americans. I mean, why would they worry about that if they can just ride on Trump's election rigging coattails? Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.